neurovasculature of the lower limbs. You might take actions like standing, walking, or jumping for granted but they would be impossible without the extraordinary ability of your legs to perform coordinated movements. However, such complex actions require an equally complex anatomy and neurovasculature supply. The lower extremity is divided into four main regions which are hip, thigh, leg, and foot. In this video, we're going to study the most important arteries, veins and nerves passing through and supplying each of these regions, as well as their respective branches. Arteries. The hip and thigh regions. In addition to the femoral artery, there are several other important ones traveling through the hip and thigh which are gluteal, obturator, deep femoral, and descending genicular arteries. The two gluteal arteries stem from the internal iliac arteries and supply blood to the piriformis, quadratus femoris, and gluteal muscles. In addition, they also supply the skin over the upper thigh and gluteal regions. The obturator artery also originates from the internal iliac artery and supplies the adductor muscles of the thigh. The deep femoral and descending genicular arteries originate directly from the femoral artery. They supply several muscles of the thigh and gluteal regions, as well as the knee joint, respectively. Knee and leg. Continuing further down the lower extremity, we reach the arteries of the knee and leg, popliteal, superior genicular, inferior genicular, tibial, anterior malleolar, and fibular or perineal arteries. The popliteal artery is a direct continuation of the femoral artery carrying blood further down the lower limb. In the knee, it gives off the superior and inferior genicular arteries which wrap around this region and supply it with blood. The popliteal artery then splits into the anterior and posterior tibial arteries that travel all the way towards the foot. The anterior tibial artery is the main blood supply for the anterior compartment of the leg. The posterior tibial artery supplies oxygenated blood to structures of the leg, such as the tibia, medial malleolus, and calcaneus with its surrounding muscles. In addition, it supplies a large number of leg muscles via its important branch, the fibular artery. As you can see, there are quite a lot of arteries that supply the lower limb. In order to avoid any confusion, watch the video on lower limb mnemonics on this channel which provide you with a quick overview. Ankle and foot. Continuing further down the leg, we meet the ankle and foot. The ankle joint is supplied by the anterior and posterior malleolar arteries, together with their branches. When it comes to the arteries of the foot, there are several important candidates dorsalis pedis artery or dorsal artery of the foot, plantar arteries, tarsal arteries, arcuate artery, dorsal metatarsal arteries, deep plantar arch, and plantar metatarsal arteries. Within the foot, the anterior and posterior tibial arteries continue as the dorsalis pedis artery and the plantar arteries, respectively. The plantar arteries supply the skin and muscles of the lateral and medial sides of the foot. The tarsal, arcuate, and dorsal metatarsal arteries all stem from the dorsalis pedis artery. They supply the metatarsals, extensor digitorum brevis muscle, and the structures of the medial side of the foot. The dorsal metatarsal arteries also supply the toes via their branches called the dorsal digital arteries. The deep plantar arch supplies the structures of the sole, or underside of the foot, as well as the toes via branches named plantar metatarsal arteries. Veins The venous drainage of the lower limb can be divided into superficial and deep systems. As you know, venous drainage happens in the opposite direction compared to the arterial blood supply. Starting from the foot, the superficial system begins with the superficial dorsal and plantar venous networks, together with the marginal and metatarsal veins. These veins drain from one into another, ultimately ending up in one of the two saphenous veins, small saphenous or great saphenous vein. The small, short saphenous vein ascends along the posterior leg, ultimately draining into the popliteal vein located within the popliteal fossa. The great, long saphenous vein travels along the medial leg, but continues along the thigh as well, opening into the femoral vein. The great saphenous vein also receives blood from the small saphenous along its course. 
As the name implies, the deep venous system is located deeper within the lower limb than the superficial one. In the foot, it starts with the digital and metatarsal veins that drain into the corresponding deep plantar and dorsal venous arches. These drain into larger veins that closely follow the course of the similarly named arteries. From here, the veins of the leg and thigh mirror the arteries. Nerves The hip and thigh regions so far we have covered all the major arteries and veins and the structures they supply it's time to look at the nerves of the lower limb, which stem from the lumbosacral plexus. The significant ones of the hip and thigh are the following, femoral, saphenous, femoral cutaneous, sciatic, obturator, gluteal, and cluneal nerves. The femoral and sciatic nerves are the most important ones because they are the main sources of all subsequent lower extremity nerves. The femoral nerve originates from the lumbar plexus L2 L4 and supplies various muscles of the anterior hip and thigh, such as the iliacus, sartorius, and the four quadriceps femoris muscles. The saphenous nerve is the largest branch of the femoral nerve. It innervates the skin of the front and medial sides of the leg. The femoral cutaneous nerves supply the skin of the posterior and lateral surfaces of the thigh, the posterior surface of the leg, as well as the skin of the perineum. The sciatic nerve is the longest single and continuous nerve in the entire body. It originates from the sacral plexus L4-S3 and travels all the way down the posterior aspect of the lower limb. The sciatic nerve innervates the entire skin of the leg, the posterior thigh muscles, and the muscles of the leg and foot. The obturator nerve innervates the adductor muscles as well as the skin on the medial aspect of the thigh. As the name suggests, the gluteal nerves innervate the three glutei muscles. The cluneal nerves arise from the L1-S3 spinal nerves, as does the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. They are responsible for innervating the skin of the gluteal region. Knee and leg Following the lower limb down to the knee, we come across another set of nerves. This joint is directly innervated by superior genicular, middle genicular, and inferior genicular nerves. Traveling past the knee and into the leg, we meet another set of important nerves particular to this region, common fibula or perineal nerve, superficial fibula or perineal, deep fibula or perineal, and tibial nerves. The common fibular nerve is actually a branch of the sciatic nerve. It innervates the knee via three articular branches and the skin of the posterolateral surface of the leg via its lateral sural cutaneous branch. The nerve then splits into its superficial and deep branches which innervate the lateral and anterior compartments of the leg, respectively. The superficial branch also supplies the skin over the dorsum of the foot. The tibial nerve is the second branch of the sciatic nerve and innervates the posterior compartment muscles of the leg, gastrocnemius, popliteus, soleus, plantaris, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. Ankle and foot The ankle region is innervated by articular branches of the tibial and deep fibular nerves. Regarding the nerves of the foot, we have the following dorsal digital nerves, proper plantar digital nerves, lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve, and plantar nerves. The dorsal digital nerves and the proper plantar digital nerves provide innovation to the toes, while the lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve supplies only the skin over the lateral side of the little toe. The plantar nerves are branches of the tibial nerve and they innervate the skin of the lateral two toes and sole of the foot, together with the intrinsic muscles of the foot, 